Hello there, this video will cover installing and getting started with OpenSCAD. OpenSCAD is a script file based graphical CAD environment that can currently run on Androids, PCs, laptops, and Chromebooks. If you are interested in Linux on an Android, then you may be interested in my playlist that will cover how to install and set up a Linux desktop on an Android without running. There will be commands, further information, and updates in the pinned comment for this video. Before we install OpenSCAD, I will give a brief summary of going from a 3D model to 3D printing the model. First, we start with creating the 3D model with some type of CAD software such as OpenSCAD. After we've created the model, we export it as an STL file. STL stands for Stereo Lithography. From there, we open the STL file in a slicer to prepare the model for 3D printing by making configurations based off of the printer and the model we are printing. Once we've done that, we export a G-code file. G-code stands for Geometric Code. That G-code file is what the 3D printer uses to print the model out. When looking for 3D printers, Creality in particular makes high-value 3D printers. Now to install OpenSCAD, we can use Synaptic, which we can open up from the menu. And in the Preferences category, we can click on Synaptic Package Manager. When Synaptic is open, we can click on the Reload button to get an up-to-date list of the available software in Synaptic. When Synaptic is done reloading, we can click on the Search button and search by name for OpenSCAD. When OpenSCAD comes up, we can right-click on it, select Mark for Installation, and then click on the Mark button for the additional required changes. From there, to download OpenSCAD, we just have to click on the Apply button, and then click on Apply again to confirm that we want to download OpenSCAD. When OpenSCAD is finished installing, we can generally ignore and close out of any errors, and then we can close out of Synaptic. Now we can open up OpenSCAD from the menu, and in the Graphics category, we can click on OpenSCAD. In the Welcome window that comes up, we can open up an example from under the Examples section by clicking on any of the pull-downs, select an example, and then click on the Open Example button. If we make OpenSCAD full screen, it will crash. So what we can do is slowly drag out the corner of the window until it crashes. This will tell us how big we can make the window. After we've successfully crashed OpenSCAD, we can open it up from the menu again, open up the example, and this time we'll drag the corner out just before the point at which it previously crashed. If we need to, we can also do a two-finger pinch zoom in to make the OpenSCAD window bigger. In OpenSCAD, we can close out the console, Aerolog, and customizer windows to make more room for the window showing the 3D model. Note that we can open the windows that we closed from the Window menu, and then uncheck any of the boxes for hiding the windows that we closed. Additionally, we can drag the edges of the windows to resize them to our liking. To zoom in and out of the 3D model, we can click on the Zoom In and Zoom Out buttons in the bottom toolbar of the window showing the 3D model. To rotate, we hold a left click and then we drag a finger on the mouse pad to rotate the model. We can also pan the model by holding a right click this time and then drag another finger on the mouse pad to pan the model. As a short example of using OpenSCAD, I'm going to go to the Editor window and I'm going to change the color of the cubes from red to purple. In OpenSCAD, in order to see any changes we make, we first need to click on the Preview button. The Preview button is the button with a cube and two arrows in it. After I've clicked on the Preview button, we can see that the color of the cubes have changed to purple. To export a 3D model as an STL file that can be opened in a slicer for 3D printing, we first have to go to the Editor window and click on the Render button. The Render button is the button with a cube and hourglass. After clicking on the Render button, a loading bar on the bottom right will show the progress. Now depending on the project size and the device, render time may vary. When the render is done, we can go back to the Editor window and click on the Export as STL button. From there, we can navigate to the desired file path, 
name the file, and then click on the Save button. Now the STL file can be opened in a slicer to get the model ready for 3D printing. For more information about OpenSCAD, there's the official OpenSCAD website, which is OpenSCAD.org. Here they have downloads available cross-platform for Linux, Windows, and Mac OS. They also have news on what's new with OpenSCAD, as well as documentation and tutorials in the form of books, videos, and articles. If we scroll down to the bottom of the documentation page on the OpenSCAD website, we can click on the cheat sheet to get a quick OpenSCAD reference. We can also print the cheat sheet to PDF like I am doing here. After I've printed it to PDF, I am opening the cheat sheet with QPDF Viewer, where we now have a cheat sheet available offline. Finally, for more help and documentation from a terminal, we can do OpenSCAD space dash dash help, or we can do man space OpenSCAD for a more detailed help. If you enjoyed this video, then you may be interested in the companion book to this video, Linux on Android phones and tablets. And other than that, see you soon!